Hey, everyone. It is Thursday, and we are bringing you back Dana from Hemlane. How are you doing, Dana? I'm great. Thanks, Michael, for having me. I love our, I love our conversations because we just talk about things that landlords, new investors think about. So the first topic of our three-part series is going to be, you know what? What are tenants responsible for in maintenance, right? I've been a landlord, you know, had thousands of tenants. So I'm curious what you think about this topic. Um, so you, you sent this topic, and I agree with it. So what are your first thoughts? Well, my first uh, thoughts have to do with emotion, right? Typically, when you're a new landlord and um, talk about single family homes, just because um, sure. that's, where, that's where the market is now. And one of the things is landlords get really emotional when the tenant doesn't agree with them on something, right? And so how do you mitigate that? How do you make it just a really smooth easy management experience. Um, and so one of the things comes to responsibilities and who's going to pay a bill. Um, both tenants and landlords sometimes escalate that um, and it becomes emotional. And uh, I, I think this, you think that. Um, so there's some things that are kind of common practice. For example, general cleaning, right? The general cleaning of the property should be tenant responsibility, right? But then it comes down to things like garbage disposals, right? If you do have a garbage disposal and there's an argument to take that out of your rental property, but if you do have a garbage disposal in your rental property, um, who is responsible for that if it breaks? And one of the um, best things to do if you think there may be something that may be tenant damage is notifying the tenant before the service is performed to let them know just as a heads up, if we find something down the garbage disposal that is not normal wear and tear that the garbage disposal just went out, that would be your responsibility. Or if you didn't troubleshoot and you didn't try to click the reset button on the garbage disposal and we send out a, a plumber and suddenly they have an $89 service call rate because you didn't do the troubleshooting steps, again, that is gonna be your responsibility. Um, so the first thing I'd say with maintenance and repair is it's about communication mm -hmm. and making sure you're communicating to the tenant the expectations. That's just with the request that's submitted. But of course, there's a lot of upfront work that you can do that would be really, really helpful. And that starts with the lease agreement. Your lease agreement can never be too concrete and too comprehensive. And what I mean by that is really outlining what are the expectations. It's not emotional if suddenly you refer to a legally binding contract that both you and the tenant have signed about who's responsible for what. Then there's no, oh, I assumed that you were going to do this with pest control and you left the food out. Um, there, there isn't that argument. It's, okay, you're responsible for this. So some things with single family homes are, you know, landscaping and the, the yard work, who's responsible. You put that out on the tenants in the lease. Lockouts. A tenant will call you at 2 a.m. and say, I'm locked out. I forgot my keys. Can you get someone out here to let me in? Well, should you really be paying for that because they're not responsible or they're not they're irresponsible and left their keys somewhere? No, right? Um, gutter cleaning is another one um, where there's actually some questions about it. Um, gutter cleaning is an example where you don't want a tenant on the roof to fall out off, right? But do you want to clean the gutters or do you want to put it in the lease that they're responsible for that and they need someone who is insured to do uh, the gutter cleaning. Um, so a lot of it has to do with what's in the lease agreement and then also where your rental property is. So know your location, right? If you're in a hurricane or a natural disaster area, who's boarding up the windows? Not only who's boarding up the windows, but who is responsible for paying for the boards to board up the windows? Are you going to leave those in the garage for the tenant or are they responsible for getting those so that can really be in the lease agreement. And I can't emphasize that most times when we see these things escalated, it is because there wasn't that communication and walking through um, the details of it. Yeah, there's a couple of things that I'll just give my perspective on. Again, remember, I rent kind of mid-market. Uh, one of the first things I, I, I chuckled when you brought up garbage disposals. About a decade ago, maybe eight years ago, I had the kick of, you know what? I'm going to take my 10 nicest houses and I'm going to add garbage disposals. That was a mistake. Uh, <laughs> talk about the most service calls I've ever gotten. And, uh, very quickly, I think I ripped out eight of the 10, uh, in, in, in less than a year. I mean, it was just non-profitable. 
Uh, yep. I can't tell you how many times eggshells and other debris was put down there. And of course you can build back the tenant, then there's a collection issue and then it, it just creates more drama than it was worth. The other one for me was dishwashers, right? Mm -hmm. Same idea, right? Know your tenants. If it, you know, you and I might think a dishwasher is commonplace for where we live, but maybe if you're renting to, to that part of the market or that part of the country and it's, it's not something they're used to, don't add those things that could create, you don't want to create unnecessary confrontation or extra maintenance on because you could you could have a great tenant who's never missed rent get put a give them a garbage disposal have two or three service calls in a month because they or their kids or don't know how to use it and pretty soon they're you know they're down two or three hundred bucks and they're like i'm out i mean that that yep. can happen it's two other things that are very common i agree make that lease as concrete as you can and have them initial right each thing one is on plumbing right uh, like when a toilet backs up or, a, you know, usually it's a toilet. It's like, okay, who's responsible? Well, I'm going to make that service call. Uh, I'm going to pay for that. Cause you don't know, right. Pipes break all the time and, and all of that. But I promise you every time we've scoped a line and we find an action figure down <laughs> the toilet, that suddenly is not my responsibility. Right? That, there's visual evidence that that is uh, not something I've done. Uh, and then the other one is a broken window. This is, it's amazing. I remember the first time I had a call for a broken window. And it was evident that it was broken from the inside out, right? Well, I'm like, tenant responsibility. It's amazing how many broken windows I've had since that are now always broken outside in. I'm like, that can't, that's not, you know, ah, it's just so frustrating. So um, some, some, some big experiences and, and yeah, it, it's back to the lease. It's, it's back to the lease. Right. And some um, are interesting where it's light bulbs, right? That's based on <laughs> usage. So they obviously are responsible for it. But then you get into questions of, great, it's a 20 foot ceiling. Do you really want a tenant on a ladder? You have some situations where it's, okay, these light bulbs I'm responsible for, just based on the house design, these ones are you're responsible for. So you're always looking at liability um, and potential and every single home is different. Um, and so that's why you really need to collect as much information. And to Michael's point, make sure they initial it in the lease and they know I am responsible for these certain items. Yeah, you set up your rules early. It's back to the whole tenant selection. The more you communicate up front, the more they acknowledge up front. It just makes for a smoother transaction. And then the other thing I would say as a landlord, if there is any gray area, your job's to 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 take that one. In, in my opinion, right? Uh, yeah. It's yeah. That's that's what I think. Uh, take it and then put it in your lease yeah, next going time. Forward. All right. You're constantly updating that. It's like marketing when a tenant keeps asking the same question of Does the rental property have this? Go update the advertisement and mention Does it have it or not? Um, it will save you a lot of time. Totally agree. Any closing thoughts on this? This has been a lot of fun to talk about. Uh, I don't, I don't think so. I hope everyone goes back and uh, checks their lease agreements. <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much, Dana.